Alright, in this video, we will take a look at how to handle events such as clicks using signals and slots in PyQt6. I will cover all the common events known as signals in PyQt6 and how to use them. I will also go over the common input widgets you will use when you are trying to make applications. Just to quickly go over the starter code I have here, which you can also find in the GitHub link below. I have created a simple application with a minimum size as well as a parent layout which is using the QVbox layout. Within that layout there is a simple label and a button. If you are unsure of how layout works, I've covered all of that in my previous video. Before we start using event handlers, we should first organize our code using a class. This is how you typically see PyQt6 applications being written, especially since PyQt uses classes for its widgets and inheriting and working with them that way is preferred. And in addition to that, it also helps make our code more organized by breaking them into smaller chunks as you will see. To start, we first create a class I'll name mine window, but you can name this anything else. But it needs to inherit from QMain window so that it has all the methods and properties of QMain window. But on top of that, we will add our own later on. We then need to create a constructor method that is called every time a new instance of our window object has been initialized. We will create the widgets we want in our application here. Since this method is automatically called every time a new window object has been initialized. Before we add our own widgets, we need to first initialize the QMain window object. To do this, we can use the super function, which in this case refers to the QMain window object. And we can then call its constructor to initialize it. Note that the self parameter here that is given when the constructor is called refers to the QMain window object instance. So instead of using window.setMinimumSize for example, we can use self.setMinimumSize. I'll also move all of the configuration and creation of widgets and layouts into this initialization constructor. I'll also change wherever I use the window variable previously into self since that now references our human window object instance. I will also use self.button and self.label instead so that I can reference them later on by making them attributes of our class. Once we have created all the widgets, it's time to make an instance of this window and initialize our application. This is similar to how we created a window variable previously and initialized QMain window. Only now, the widgets we want will be created when we initialize this window object. Now, if we run this application, we can see that we have the same previous layout. For now, we'll make it so that when we click on the button, we print something to the terminal. We can do this by writing self.button, which is our widget, dot clicked, which is the event we are listening to, and dot connect, which is what method or function we are attaching that event listener to. I'll explain more on how this works in a second. Within this connect method, it takes an event handler, otherwise known as a slot in PyQt6. To create this, let's first define a new method within our class. I will name my click handler, but you can name it anything else and I will simply print something to the terminal. We can then add it to our slot above and we can do this by specifying it as an argument to the connect method. The connect method takes an argument as a reference to a method or function which will be automatically caught in this case once the button has been clicked. So if we run this application and click the button, we can see that button click now has been printed to the terminal. So just to explain a little bit further on how this all works, is that whenever our button has been clicked, it will send a signal and we can connect that signal to a slot which is a function or a method that will be caught. The way that we do this in PyQt6 is that we first write self.button which is our widget in this case, specify the type of signal we want to listen and react to, and connect it to an event handler using the connect method. Besides just the click signal, there are also other signals that we can listen to on this Q push button object. For example, there's pressed, release, and triggered, and a few others as well. 
which you can find out in the documentation which i'll link below but i'll just go over the ones that we'll commonly use if we wanted to change the text of the label we can do it within the click handler method once the button has been clicked we can change the text by using the set text method of the label this removes the previous text and uses this new string that we have specified as an argument. So if we run the application now, we can see that once the button has been clicked, the label changes. Besides just changing a label, we may also want to collect the information from the user once the button has been clicked. We can allow the user to enter some sort of text by using the queue line edit widget. So I'll import it and I'll change the label to a queue line edit widget instead. Within the click handler slot, we can receive the current text of the input field by using self.lineEdit.text. This returns the current string within the input field and we can then print it. But in a real application, you will probably want to submit it to a database. If we want to trigger an action every time the user input has been changed, we can use the text change signal that is available on the line added widget. And for the purpose of testing, I'll just print out whatever the user has entered. So if we run this application now, we can see that the new text is being printed every time the user enters a new character. Just to showcase a few more features of the queue line edit widget, since we only briefly covered it in the previous video, we can also set a placeholder so that the user knows what they should be entering in the field. We can also set the maximum length of characters for the line added widget. I will also include a link to the documentation in the description below for all the possible methods of the Q line added widget, but these are the ones that you'll most often use. Now that we have already covered how to use signal and slots, I will go over common widgets you will use when you are working with user input when making PyQt applications. If instead of getting the user to enter data, we want them to choose from a set of predefined options, we can use a combo box. We can then add items to it using the add item method. In this case, I'll create a simple combo box for the user to select a color. If we run the application now, we can see that we have a simple sort of drop down menu that the user can select options from. Something that you may also want to do when creating a combo box is to add an icon next to each item. I'll add an example icon by first importing Q icon from Qt GUI. This object allows us to read image files and set them as icons in our application.
I will also use this simple example icon that I will also include in the GitHub link down below. To add an item with an icon, I will use this icon and set its relative file path as the first argument to add item using Q icon. I will then add the item's title as the second argument. And if we run the application now, we can see that the last item of our drop down has an icon next to it. We can also use our push button slot to print the item that the user has selected when they click the button. To access the current text of the item that has been selected by the user, we can use the self.combobox.currentText method. If we wanted to react to whenever the user selects a new item, we can make use of the current text change signal and connect it to a slot. We can actually also specify an additional parameter to receive the current text from the slot or the event handler. And then we can use that as the current text. Both ways of doing are the same, just that this is a little more efficient. To accept a number as an input instead of text, we could use QSpinBox. We first do this by importing it and initializing it as usual. If we add it to our layout now and run the application, we can see that we have a simple input widget that allows the user to specify a number. With QSpinBong, it accepts integers from the user, but we can change the range of values it accepts using setMinimum and the setMaximum method. And if we want to use the current value of the QSpin box that the user has entered, we can use the value method of the QSpin box. And lastly, we can also set the step of the spin box, which is how much the spin box increments by using the set single step method. If instead of integers, we wanted to accept numbers with decimals as well, we can use the Q double spin box, which has mostly similar methods and functions.
the last widget I'll go over is the Q radio button widget which you commonly see on forms nowadays. It allows the user to select from a set of options which are visible to the user. We can add it to our window and if we run it we have a single radio button. But what you probably want is to use a group of radio buttons. To make a group of radio buttons, it is much better to use Q button group. This is because it allows us to easily get the buttons that have been selected out of a group of buttons. The Q button group doesn't change anything visually, but it makes it easier to work with a group of buttons. I'll first create a button group and I'll set it as an attribute of our class so that I can reference it later on. I'll then create all the buttons. In this case, I'll add three buttons of various colors. And I'll also add them to our button group. And since the button group doesn't change anything visually, we still need to add the buttons to our layout. So I'll add all of them to our parent layout using the add widget method. And if we want to see which button has been clicked on by the user, we can use the checked button method that is available on the button group widget. If we run it now and see if it works, it actually only prints the button object and not the text. To get the text of the button, we can use the text method that is available on the Q radio button. Alright, that's about it for this video. In the next one, we'll look at how to easily design user interfaces in PyQt6 using QDesigner, which is a drag and drop interface that allows us to create the user interface and then have it converted to code that we can use. If this video has helped you or if you have enjoyed it, please like it and possibly subscribe as well to help my channel grow.